decided to play around with my Lancome. This is the eyeshadow blush palette that I got in the Christmas kit. I don't know, many of you probably have seen that Christmas kit where you, you buy uh, a product and then they give you this palette. So I thought this was pretty cool. I ended up wanting the glam look. And this is what the, what the colors look like. And I did pretty well everything that you're seeing on my eyes. Granted, it's not the greatest look because I certainly um, don't have the best skills. But I did everything with the exception of my eyeliner, which is just, I think, my Urban Decay black liner. I know, creature habit. And uh, my eyebrows. So that's really about the, the only thing I did separately. So I used the foundation that I have on. I have not opened up. I did buy the Lancome foundation so I could get the gift, but I have not opened it up. So the foundation that I actually have on is my CYO. I'm trying to finish the two bottles that I've got open. They, they're they almost gone. And then I do have the CYO replacement, which is the Kick-Ass, Soap and Glory Kick-Ass. So I've got that still and I'm trying to really get through some of my open bottles before I open the Lancome. But I am going to compare my Lancome to my Estee Lauder and also to my YSL. So my YSL and Estee Lauder are my current high-end favorites. And I have I have a couple of other high-ends that I've I have that you know, I didn't, I wasn't really happy with, but my Estee Lauder and my Lancome are the two foundations that I have bought. Now the Estee Lauder I bought repeatedly. I'm going to do that, but I wanted to sort of like, I was thinking like kind of like maybe a look and I was just playing around today. So I'm like, okay, you know, let's see if I can create a look with it. And on my head, by the way, um, is my Henry Margu. This is my Henry Margu Hayden wig. And you know, I haven't worn this wig in quite a while and I always love this wig. I really always have loved this wig. I just haven't, haven't worn it in quite a while. You know, what I like about this is kind of a really casual look. You got the beachy waves, it is the blonde. Um, I really, I like it a lot. It, it's very comfortable on. It does have the permatease. But all of the wigs I currently have have permatease. I think any future wigs that I get, I'm going to really go for something that's very um, low density as far as permatease. Because I think that the, for me anyways, a, a wig that doesn't have a lot of permatease is, is the, um, the more natural look anyways. So, but yeah, so I'm just kind of futzing around and doing that and I don't know. I figured I'd start a vlog and we'll see where this brings us. I don't have anything major going on this week, but I did decide I wanted to try to vlog and I'll probably share this or bits of this, who knows, in a, a video, but I wanted to kind of... I'm really not getting any better with my eye looks, but I want to tell you something that's really bizarre. The other day in one of my videos, um, I, it, it's, I think it's my evening routine, or maybe it was my morning routine. I used the Tati palette on my eyes. And, you know, I know there's some people that I'm surprised that have high skills in makeup that can't seem to make the Tati palette work for them. But I don't really think it's the palette so much as I, I just don't think they put maybe like the colors or the consistency or whatever, because I just can't believe that some of them that have such great skills can't make it work when someone like me who has Zippo skills can do something with it. So I ended up using that palette. I actually love the look I got. I wore that look all day long. I had a number of compliments on my eye look that day. Now I am the type of person, and you know, maybe it's not age appropriate, but I happen to like glitter glows and sparkly things on my eyes. This palette, the Lancome palette, I actually kept digging into the shimmery parts of it to try to get more of a shimmer pop. And I mean, I did okay with it, but I would like it to be a little bit more shimmery. <laughs> That's that. I mean, that's what I like. So, and that's the one thing. When I use the Tati palette, 
I used the Tati palette and I used a couple of the, the, I should have probably identified in the video what I did, but then I used a couple of the colors from the LA Girl palette and then the Tati palette and I did a mixture of them both. And I thought that was real, I thought the look came out really good. Anyways, so, you know, me with no talent. Um, but darn it, you know, I paid money for it, so I wasn't going to uh, let it go to waste by any means. So, anyways, that's that's it for now. I just wanted to maybe start a vlog and see what I do with it. Who knows, right? Maybe this will never see the light of day. Well, welcome back. Yesterday, I, I talked about, well, I, I wore this wig yesterday. And um, I also wore it in the vlog yesterday, the start of my vlog, but I did a lot of Insta clips yesterday and I had a number of people ask me about the wig. I have two of these. So this one is sort of like a blonde with, you know, like a, a wheat, uh, darker blonde with wheat colored highlights. So I really like this one. The other one I have is 88H, which is supposed to be more of a strawberry. Now, I find this one to be a lighter color, and, and I'm not too sure why. They're so very similar, but this is sort of a strawberry blonde with light, lighter wheat highlights, where this is sort of a wheat blonde with lighter highlights, so yeah. So this one is really nice. I mean, this is Hayden. These were sent to me. I looked this one up. I received this in December of 2018. So in this one, I know I got probably quite early or maybe about four or five months beforehand. Anyways, Henry Magoo Hayden wig. What I like about this is this is a very casual, beachy look. And it's super, super comfortable. The cap on this is really nice. It does have a monofilament top right here and it does have a lace front and you can also cinch these so you can size the cap down which is super nice i just find it to be very comfortable very casual easy to wear and on my lips so i have received a and and this is all through the octoly network so i just want to mention this because i did get this lippy quite a while ago giovanni via octoly this one is just a really, I don't know if you can see it. It's just a really pretty rose color. And I'm going to go on my arm only because I've been swatching. I don't know if you can see that. I like this a lot. I wear this a lot. I love, love, love the bullet. I love the application. I just think it's like so super, super cute. So when they had another one and I re when I requested it, this is a... I'll make sure I list the colors. This is a darker pink. I'll put it on right next to my hand, my arm, so you can see. This is the darker pink. I really like them. Now, I'm not used to darker colors mm, on me. But I will tell you, I know this is a luxury brand, and I know that they're very pricey. But I've got a few high-end lipsticks that I've been using. And there's just something special. I think every now and then you just have to indulge yourself in something like that. So they were sent to me via the Octoly Network. Now, because I'm a light lipstick wearer, I usually top off anything I can with a very light color. In this particular case, I'm topping it off with the Hard Candy number 1391. I think it's a nude color. It's a real pale, pale pink color. I think it just gives me a little bit more of, in my comfort zone anyways, of a lighter look. I really enjoy indulging myself in a luxury item. And to me, lipstick, oh yeah, it's just really special. So I really like that lipstick a lot. I think it looks really pretty, even though it's darker than my comfort zone. But those of you know that I love my Built Bars. I've talked about Built Bars. I really enjoy Built Bars. They're low carb, low sugar. They taste good. They're filling. They're, they give you energy. They give you a whole lot of different things. And I'm an isogenic person, but I don't like my isogenic bars. I don't. But these, the Built Bars, I love. 
I bought them. They were sent to me complimentary. I've bought them. I bought them. I bought them. I decided to go ahead and join their affiliate program because I love the product. So it's up to you whether you want to use my link or not. But if you do, I will get some pennies. But these bars are fabulous. And they came out with these two new flavors. Toffee Almond. Mm. And this one is the German Chocolate. Holy cow and a half. Delicious, delicious. Tomorrow's a snowstorm. Huge, huge snowstorm. We are looking to get probably, they're saying, 12 and above inches of snow. The line in New Hampshire is, if you're like, I think 15 miles off the coast where that imaginary line goes down, it could be 12 on up inches of snow. If you're on the other side of the line, it's 8 to 12. Well, we are right over that line. So we are probably very comfortably in the 12 inch mark. Oh my gosh. So anyways, I have no idea. I did not do a great job vlogging this week. I had really good intentions to vlog on a regular basis, but I just didn't. We had that snowstorm and it was like, it was insane. It lasted for two days. That was Monday and Tuesday. I'm going to insert a little clip here so you can see me showing you my bathroom window. You can see the snow. <laughs> when I film in the bathroom, the times you'll say, oh, I like the trees. I like the green. I like the flowers. No more green. It's all snow out there. But on Friday, I went up north and I taught out of our Belmont, New Hampshire office. And then I st on the way home, I stopped at the outlets in Tilton. They had a cosmetic company store there. It is a really nice cosmetic company store. They had great sales. Some items were like 80% off. And my sales clerk was just really exceptional. So it's a beautiful store, lots of name brands, and great buys. So I did I did some damage in that store, and I'll share some of that with you in another video. And I got the most amazing gift in the mail from Simply Sheila, and it was just it was just really awesome. I'll show you that in an upcoming video, too, but I'll insert a little sneak peek here so you can kind of see what it is. But I was, like, absolutely thrilled. I thought I would sort of end this vlog on attempting to answer the questions that I got from many of you after my last video when I talked about Retin-A. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that there's really concerns about using Retin-A or buying it overseas or, you know, just being sure that you're getting good stuff and, you know, and all that. You're not going to get ripped off and stuff like that. Well, I'll tell you that I started using Retin-A in 2016. And I have a prescription from my dermatologist. I see my dermatologist every year. So he gave me a prescription. I filled my first one up in Canada. This was in 2016. And the Canadian pharmacy that I used had great prices, much better than here in the States, but still pretty pricey. So uh, shortly thereafter, I discovered Reliable RX Pharmacy in India. And that, the prices hands down in India were fabulous. It's unbelievable to me, even today. So what I did, and this is to answer one of the questions, how do I feel secure buying? I just opened up a separate checking account. And I have that separate checking account with a limited amount of money in there. $50, $100, and I use it just to buy stuff like this <laughs> overseas. And... I pay by e-check. Now, I was really nervous about that in the beginning, but then I figured, you know, there's only X amount of money in this checking account. E-check is just like if I was going to pay a bill online. I give them my routing number and authorize what's being taken out. I've never had a problem. However, that said, I think you need to do whatever is your comfort zone as far as where you buy your Retin-A. There are people that'll go on vacation and buy it in Mexico or other places. Yeah. My last Retin-A that I bought from the pharmacy in India, the Johnson & Johnson was the manufacturer. I couldn't believe it. But yeah, it's significantly, significantly cheaper. I just purchased the Hydroquinone 4% and Tretinoin 0.05%. And it was like $14 plus shipping. The last time I bought my 1% gel, it was $7 plus shipping. 
seven US dollars. So to me, that was amazing. What I'm currently using right now is my 1% Tretinoin. This, the cream, was actually gifted to me from one of you, and I think this is fantastic. Fantastic. And most recently, I got the 0.05% as a gift from the same person. So thank you, thank you so much. So between the cream and the gel, have I noticed a difference? I really haven't. I think the cream, I, I used to think that the gel probably applied easier, but I actually think the cream applies a little easier. I enjoy the cream. I don't notice any kind of a big difference, but if I can't get the 1% cream from Reliable RX, I will go right back to using the gel. I have no problem with that at all. So I started using this in 2016. I'm 62 years old. I was really nervous. But I did start out slow, and I started with a over-the-counter retinol first before I went to the prescription Retin-A. And like I said, I bought my first one through a Canadian Pharmacy, and then I went and I used Reliable RX. And I have a prescription. You don't need to have one, but I have one. I see my dermatologist once a year. I just saw him not too long ago because he removed a spot that's come back um, so I have to go see him again but when I saw him I talked to him about my skin I talked to him about the different results the CBD oil and stuff like that he said to me that my skin the texture the the you know my skin is the best that he's ever seen it and I thought that was pretty impressive yes I have discoloration I have dark spots I have veins I have age spots but all that aside, the, the texture of my skin, the wrinkles, the smoothness, he said it was, he, he said it was, what, he said what you're doing is working for you. So to answer some of the questions, it was a slow, slow process for me. I tried to rush it. And to me, really going low and slow is the best advice I can give you take a take a get a lower dosage if you're going to order from reliable rx for the very first time go 0.025 and get 0.050 then you'll have both and you can kind of play around with them i would not jump in really quick let your skin get used to it get acclimated see how it reacts because to me i i have to go to work each day and I went through my period of total uglies, and every now and then I still have an ugly, although, you know, I've been able to really contain it with my CBD oil, but I went through some really ugly phases with it. Overall, though, however, there's, and I always say this, even in real estate, even when I'm teaching classes and, and new concepts and stuff like that, you know, there's the, there's the pain and the pleasure in everything. So the pain is going through some of the ugly phases, the pleasure is the end result, what you have afterwards. So tretinoin is turning over your skin, obviously. So you want to, to slough off the old, dead, crutzy skin and exfoliate gently. It's really super important. But more important is protecting your skin. Sunblock, sunblock, sunblock. UVA rays, UVB rays, UVA. You want to make sure that what you're using protects you from UVA. That's the aging rays. That's the, that's the stuff that penetrates deep in your skin. You don't notice it because you're not burning. UVB is the burn. So you definitely want to make sure you're really well protected, especially if you're using this. So now that I've been using it three years, beginning I thought, oh my God, I'd never see a difference. But now after three years, it's amazing the difference that I see in my skin. Has it stopped my aging? No. Uh-uh. No. Is it like a miracle? Well, I think so. To me, it has been because it's made such a huge difference. And it's also been in conjunction with other products as well. But it really has made such a huge difference on my skin that it is a holy grail item for me. It really is. And the fact that it is something that is affordable, where in the beginning I thought, mm, you know, I'm not going to spend $300 for a tube of cream to put on my face. $7? $15? Absolutely. It is so well worth doing. And if you don't ever want to do the medical grade Retin-A, do the Retinols, do all of the over-the-counters, 
do something. And if you're 35 and you're thinking to yourself, oh, I got plenty of time, guess what? You don't. You don't. Because one day you're going to be 65 and you're going to be like me and you're going to say, wow, I wish I'd started earlier. I wish I'd started when I was 35, 36, 38. And if you are 35, 36, 38 and you're starting this, go really slow. At that age, you don't need to be on the big guns. You don't need to be at the 1%. But can you imagine if you started that young and then by the time you're in your 40s and your 50s and you increase and you increase and then by the time you're in your 60s, your skin's going to be, in my opinion, it's going to be so much better than it would have been if you'd never done it. So it's not too late to do it if you're already in your 60s. I'm a classic example. I started at 62. And when I was 62 and I started it, it wasn't like I had done a, a number of different skincare things. I didn't. I mean, I, I did about maybe three months of a over-the-counter retinol to try to get my skin used to it. I never did sunblock. I never did. I mean, I would just wash my face. I take my makeup off, wash my face, put some sort of cream or oil on, and that would be it for my skincare. So, but the difference is, you know, a lot of people will go in that throwback 10 years ago, you know, 10 pictures 10 years ago. The difference in my skin is amazing. And it, it isn't even so much the wrinkles because I have them, you know, I'm not, it's not going to make the wrinkles go away. It, it'll hopefully continue to stop them from getting really bad, bad, or allowing them to get bad slowly, if that makes sense. But it's the tone and the texture and the brightness of my skin. That, that to me, has been the more overall. It's almost like my, it's almost like my skin feels alive. Talk about corny. <laughs> but truly. So, you, you're, never, you're never too old to start this routine at all. And those of you that asked the question about the Reliable RX, obviously do your own research, but I feel totally comfortable ordering from them. And yes, my link is below, and yes, it's an affiliate link. I already explained that in my previous video. You don't have to order through that link. It's entirely up to you, whatever you choose to do. But if you are holding off because of affordability, it is so affordable. Can you imagine paying $7 for a tube of Retin-A when down the street here it's three something, 300 and something. So affordability, yeah, it's it can be very, very affordable and you're not too young to start and you're not too old to start. And yes, they're the ugly phases. You do have to exfoliate. Please don't over exfoliate. Don't rub your skin raw and don't jump into it and go gung-ho, full force, go slow baby steps, slow baby steps. You will eventually get to where you want to be. I remember when I started and I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to go five nights a week, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And people would say, no, don't do that. No, 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 don't do that. And I know I'm still going to do it my way. And I think I set myself back because of it. I did. I, I set myself back. I think if I'd gone slow and low and did it the right way, I would have had a, my first year would have been a lot smoother and I would have been a lot more ahead of myself at the end of that first year. Anyways, I don't know if I addressed the questions you had. Many of you asked that same question about Reliable Rx. And then, oh, the other question was how often am I using it? I think as your skin gets to a certain point, you may not have to use it as much anymore or whatever. I'm roughly three times a week. Every other day, sometimes not even, but usually three times a week. Very rarely is it four times a week, but every second application that I do, I'm going to be using the hydroquinone. I use that on, I have like a cluster of like age spots right here on my cheeks, so I, I use it there, and I also use it on the corner of my eye over here. And and then when on the nights that I am using it, that's where I'll put it on, but then I'll also spread it throughout my whole face. And going down my neck, I've been using 0.05% mixture with my rosehip seed oil. I've tried many different neck treatments, and my neck... It's not all that great. <laughs> it is not all that great. But I think that what I have been doing with my rosehip seed oil, with my tretinoin going down my neck, and then I use my CBD oil. My Whatever CBD oil you use is going to be, again, up to you. But make sure it's 
the right mixture. Make sure you're not just buying into something called hemp. And this hemp, in, you can buy hemp anywhere. It isn't going to be the CBD. So just be careful of the product that you are using, but I use that as a moisturizer. And I, that has my flakes, my uglies, Bye bye. Truthfully, because this like it, it's like made the huge a huge huge difference. Huge difference. So, anyways, I don't want to keep babbling, but I wanted to address those questions that so many of you had, and hopefully, I answered them all. Thank you all so much, guys, and I will see you on my next video. If you have not already done so, please consider thumbing, giving me a thumbs up. Please make sure you leave me a comment. I upload, as you know, I try to upload twice a week, Thursdays and Sunday nights. I like to premiere my videos because I enjoy the engagement in the chat room. So if you're here during a premiere, jump into the chat room if you haven't done it and chat with us. I truly, truly enjoy that engagement. So thank you all so much and I'll see you on my next video. And if you have any other questions, let me know and I'll address them in a video as well. Bye guys.